Okay, uh, today we are looking at a slightly different method for calibrating a TV and that is can you calibrate a TV with a cell phone app? Um, how accurate really is it? Um, can, you, can you get some good results from it? Um, very interesting. Um, so I will be using the Spears and Munsell disc today and uh, really just uh, I'm using this because it provides all of the uh, test patterns needed for this type of thing um, and I'll show you exactly what I'm using a little later but um, this idea came to me <clears throat> from this uh, youtuber um, Plasma TV for gaming um, now if you don't know him he, uh, he's a gamer and um, he um, sets his TVs up really best for gaming and for motion so I want you to keep that in mind but um, he has um, picked up on a few things um, uh, from filmmaker mode to other modes and it doesn't really look good so what he did is he found this app on the phone that could measure um, the Kelvin um, and whether it was leaning green or red or anything like that <clears throat> to basically um, calibrate his display. Now, one of the benefits of actually doing it this way is um, there is enjoyment uh, from the discovery of a, a product or something that you own and understanding how things work, right? Um, it's um, somewhat scientific. Um, it's enjoyable. Like this type of stuff is enjoyable to me is okay we did it this way one time let's try a different way you know you test lots of different ways and um, it makes you good at understanding how these TVs work that's really um, the, you know that's really the benefit of this uh, it's borderline engineering as well so um, it's just very interesting stuff now I'm going to play some of the video um, that he first started doing he's got a few more videos on this as well about calibrating on the phone. I'll link this in the description so credit goes to him for really finding this app and this method because uh, I've never seen anyone else posting about this so um, one of the thing is the reason I like watching this guy is because a lot of his comments and um, things are really the same as mine like um, the new LG OLEDs and things like that and the direction that um, the 2023 TVs are going in with like the black levels being raised when lights are on and things like that I can't I'm not buying that TV right <laughs> um, and he went into like a, um, a Best Buy store and he was like looking at the black levels and things like that with the lights coming down and he was like I'm not buying the TV because uh, because of, because of this reason uh, I am very like that. When it comes to TVs, I'm straight up not buying a TV just because of one issue like that. I wouldn't do it. Now, I watch movies in a dark room, but still, the way the, the screen, if there's any issues with like light reflecting back in and raising black levels and things like that, I'm not, I'm not going to buy it. I'm going to let them go through a few generations of using this technique or now next year they'll use something different and now now it's time to buy you know things like that there's just certain years with the OLED so I'm just like hey I've got an L I've got a C9 here and I'm waiting for that year to upgrade and for me um, I just have not found a year yet where I, I could say yes now it's time to upgrade yeah the black levels on the C9 are a little crushed sure we can we, we get much better um, picture from that and things like that it's great but for me it just it's not the time to buy I just didn't feel as though it's time to buy now if you're buying in and you've never had an OLED before yeah great the um, probably the C2 is actually the best one because you can actually get into the service menu, turn a lot of things off with the G, the G3 and the the C3. I, I wouldn't buy it. I've read the reviews and I'm like, number one, you really can't get into a lot of service menu stuff and it just doesn't measure well anyway. So getting a little sidetracked here about what this uh, video is all about, but this I, I, I really... Um, you know, I, I really resonate with a lot of a lot of the things this guy says, and, and he's a gamer. 
you know I'm on the opposite side I do game but I don't game in this capacity of you know judging quality when I game I just it, it does you know for me it doesn't really matter so I don't play on an OLED you know or anything like that not for gaming um, so let's play a minute of this video I'm sure he wouldn't mind um, just to see what what his problem is I'm going to share with you the settings I am using to go from this Martian looking lady <laughs> to this beautiful lady okay and more important than that I'm gonna share with you the strategy how you can calibrate your own TV using a cell phone app okay so of course this is not going to be accurate okay of course not no way you're going to use a cell phone app and calibrate your TV to be absolutely accurate and perfect but who cares I don't care okay let me start by saying that I couldn't care less if my TV is perfectly accurate if it looks like this okay and this is not perfectly accurate these are the filmmaker mode out of the box settings. It looks green. I'm sorry, this doesn't look good. And I never noticed this before. One, because I don't watch movies, okay? I rarely watch anything that is not playing games, okay? So I've never made a comparison between skin tones on my displays. But when I compare my plasma TV with this, I was like, man, these ladies they look like martians okay they don't look good at all and my plasma tv is not accurate either but it just looks so much better <laughs> okay yeah so that's that's the video he goes on for a few more videos explaining this method and he even even as a, like an almost a, a complete start to finish calibration uh using essentially this cell phone app and um well, first off, he's picked up on a few other things here, and that is the filmmaker mode. Now, I think the CX and the um, C1 had uh, green issues with filmmaker mode out of the box, and I believe this is what he's seeing here. Because a lot of people questioned filmmaker mode when it first came out, and I think it was on the CX. It was either the CX or the C1. Um, I believe it was on the CX. And when it first came out, it was it was it wasn't as bright, and we had this green tint going over it as well. So um, I don't know what was happening when this first came out. Now with filmmaker mode, there's a lot of processing and things that are turned off, so that could be affecting the way the colors are balanced in some way, um, and things like that. One of the things to say as well, um, he has the um, he has an LG C1. The C1 is the one of the most inaccurate displays out of the box that you can buy from LG. Uh, I don't know what it was. It was a bad display from an accuracy point of view. It calibrated really well. <laughs> it calibrated excellently. But out of the box, it's terrible. Um, it's just it's one of the worst displays from that point of view that they've made. Um, but um, a lot of this color accuracy thing was fixed in the C2. Once we got to the C2, there was a level of accuracy that was just much better. And um, for some reason, again, they've kind of gone backwards in the C3. But um, yeah, uh, yeah. So let's have let's take a look at this. Um, so yeah, I am using the Spears and Munsell disc, and um, Spears and Munsell disc has lots lots of options. Um, so this is the HDR side of it. You can choose whether you want HDR10, HDR10+, Dolby Vision. All the patterns are exactly the same. You can change their luminance. Um, let's go full screen so I don't think you can see everything. You can you can choose 350 nits, 600, 1,000, 2,000, 10,000. You can you can do anything um, with with this the disc. That's the the benefit. I also did SDR as well. Uh, so that's that's really nice. So this is the options that you would have on the Spears and Munsell disc. So these are grayscale patterns, right? And um, field means it's a 10% window, right? It's a square box in the screen. Or you can choose window. Um, oh no, sorry, I uh, I have this backwards. Uh, field is full screen. 
I'm, I'm sorry about that. Uh, field is full screen, complete full screen, 20% gray, 30% uh, gray, 40% gray, 50% gray, or you can choose window, uh, which is a 10% window, um, to measure things. Now, the reason um, window is better uh, to measure with is because when you have something in the center of your screen, as I will show you, um, the color is about as accurate as it can be, uh, depending on your panel as well. Um, one thing to think about with OLED panels, um, WRGB panels at least, is uh, they don't look the same in the middle to the side and to the, to the right and left sides. Uh, the right side might lean red and the left side might lean blue. And um, I hate that, by the way. I hate screen uniformity issues and anything like that. It's better in a uh, QD OLED. Uh, they are much better for that, but again, I'm still not uh, jumping on board yet because number one is it's a Sony, and um, there's just things under the hood with the Sony that I just um, no, I'm not buying. I'm not buying a Sony. There's again, there's just certain things I can't do. Um, and a Samsung, I don't think you'll ever see me buy a Samsung unless it's ridiculously good. So um, I'm really picky about my displays and what I can do with them. So, um, but yeah, um, always choose. I would for accuracy always choose uh, the window, the 10% window, because you are getting really an even distribution of of essentially the panel there. We start to drift as we go to the right, and we drift as we go to the left. So uh, it's just some things to think about. Um, just a couple of things, um, if I haven't said them already. Um, my TV has been professionally calibrated to D65 uh, white point, and um, we're really going to see how this phone essentially measures up. Um, now, I'm going to give you a screenshot first, though, just because we were talking about the screen uniformity, and that is what happens um, to the screen unit. This was. This image was taken um, at the very right side of my screen, right in the corner, and in the corner it leans to red, and I can see that it leans to red. Um, now, um, you know, that's just the where the panel is. Um, I'm not sure. Um, I mean, obviously QD OLED is better, um, but, um, you know, really hopefully things like this do improve in the future. But I do think QD OLED really is going to be the way to go if you want perfect or almost perfect screen uniformity. Um, so yeah, it, it, it leans red, right? It's I'm considering this one percent. It leans one percent red, right? So just something to think about. So let's. Um, I'm going to go through these. Um, so uh, let's go through the SDR. I put 20%, 30%, 40%, all the way up to 100%. I measured all the grayscale uh, windows, 10% windows, uh, just to see what we have. So let's take a look. Um, I'm going to keep it not full screen because I want, if anybody wants to copy these settings for whatever, whatever reason, just to see how they compare to theirs, they'll always know which one we're on. So in the corner here, it will say 20%, right? Uh, 30%, you know, 40%. So right away, what do we see? Uh, we see that the um, color temperature is not 6500, it's 6800, right? So we have, now uh, bear in mind, I have not, um, that you can calibrate the phone uh, app, um, but I don't really know how to do that. So what I'm just using this out of, like, out of the box, so to speak and seeing how things measure. So, um, I w I'm not getting wrapped up into into this, that, hey, it's measuring 6800 Kelvin, something's wrong. I'm actually not. Um, I'm, actually, uh, I'm actually encouraged by all of these results, and I think you can use this phone um, to get a reasonable level of accuracy. Um, just a, just a, a, a bit of history as well is I have taken a course in uh, f with the Imaging Science Foundation uh, for calibrating TVs and things like that. I have a certificate. It's a basic course, but I um, 
I've calibrated displays before. Um, I've uh, well, I've calibrated my own display, and uh, we calibrated somebody else's display as well, and things like that. So I have a, I have I have limited knowledge on this, and um, but it is a um, an enjoyment of mine anyway. Uh, so I just wanted to let you know that um, let you know that. And again, my TV is professionally calibrated. So um, so yeah. Now um, let's move on. So this is twenty percent. And as well, uh, just a, another thing is I'm considering this two percent, right? I'm not sure if it is. It, it, it is two percent, but I'm just considering this last number two percent. So whatever this says, and um, when it when it is not negative, it is leaning towards green. If it is in a negative number, it's leaning towards red. Now, in my opinion, you never want to lean towards red. Um, in my opinion, if you want uh, skin tone accuracy, you want to be in the 1% to 2% range of green because green is the most sensitive um, color that our, our eyes see and you will get better facial tones in that zone. Um, another thing back in the day, we was always told to leave green alone and, calib and calibrate around green right green is your green is the color that you just don't you didn't you didn't uh, need to touch and you bring everything else around it uh, like that so uh, let's continue uh, okay so we have 30 percent again 6800 Kelvin um, we are uh, two percent green fine 68 at 40 one uh, percent green 50. 2% green, 6850, 6900 uh, at 60, 2% green, 1% green at 70, 6850, 2% uh, at 80, 6850, 6950, we're not leaning anyway. Um, if anything, though, it is po see that it is, it's actually still positive. It, we are not negative into that, so that's something to think about as well. If you were calibrating and you didn't know if you wanted to go this low, at the very least, you are not going into red. You are still in in green uh, like this. But I would, if if you was calibrating this, I would lean towards one percent slash two percent green. You should, in my opinion, on this app, get perfect skin tones around that zone. All right, so 100%. Now we're right on the on the 100% window there. Look, we're actually right on the money, but we potentially could be leaning red. Um, you know, something to think about. 6900 Kelvin here as well. So, uh, really, what have we gathered from that, right? Um, that this phone app appears to be on a WRGB OLED measuring 6500 Kelvin because that's what my TV is calibrated to as around 6850 Kelvin, right? So I had, when I, once I saw this, I was like, well, I have a couple of theories as to why this is doing it. So some things to think about is when you measure or sorry uh, record a, an OLED with a with a cell phone app with a um, with, no with the camera or with any other camera the TV leans blue right and I'm not sure if that is to do with the ambient light as well but whenever you record an OLED it leans blue is it leaning blue by this much by 300 Kelvin maybe I, I don't know but that was my first my first inkling my first my first thought was I think the phone is just capturing more blue than is actually there and because of the way the OLED pixel structure on WRGB OLEDs is is made so um, <clears throat> basically it has its three pixels or its three colors and it has a line also of, uh, of white and the white increases in intensity um, with them with the other color as well. It, it does this, I believe, anyway. Um, and that potentially 
could be why it's measuring this, this way or you can just get into the app calibrate it hey that's what 6500 kelvin is and then it measures it does actually measure correctly but some devices cameras uh, colorimeters as well need to be i believe need to be set up to say this is an oled so um it almost like a calibration f uh, to tell it this is an oled this is how you'll be you'll be capturing light now and if you measured an LCD, it wouldn't follow that pattern. It would have to be then something different. So I, th I think this is what's happening here. Um, why is this encouraging though? Why, why does this number not really ma actually matter on a calibrated display? Because it, it, it simply does not matter. What matters is the fact that this is measuring the same from 20, 68. Yeah, 69, you know, but we're, we're right on in the ballpark. The entire way up the scale is the same temperature. That's what really matters. Because um, some, of the, some of the displays I've seen, you can, you can measure at uh, 80. You could be like 9,000 Kelvin. And down here, you could be 5,500. You don't want that. So this is, the, this is what the calibration is showing you. We have this level of accuracy, and the phone can actually show you that. That we are essentially 6850 on average, I would say, the entire way across the board all the way up to 100. So that's in SDR. Um, now, these I will go through much quicker now because we've actually explained, like, you know, kind of what's going on. Again, 20 to 100. The reason I couldn't go any lower is because... Um, the phone can only um, it only activate the phone only activates with so much light, and um, anything below 20, um, it just it didn't record it. So I, I went from 20, um, 20 and above seemed to work. Anything below, it just didn't give you actual accurate results. So HDR10, the first thing we're noticing with the HDR side of things is that greens are now pushed from in the 1% to 2% range up potentially higher. Um, but I guess that is only for this first one here. Um, I would consider this 3%. So again, 60, we're around 68 to 6900 Kelvin um, with a 3%. Now we go into the two, we're at 6,800 Kelvin. So the exact same Kelvin score here, 69 at 40, 50, 68, 69 at 60, 70, 69, 80, 69, 50, 69, 50, and 69, 50, right. So what I'm trying to say again is that um, whatever this number is actually is immaterial on my display because every single screenshot you're going to see is 69 to 6800 Kelvin. Do I need to calibrate this? No, I don't care. It doesn't, it doesn't matter that I, ha that I calibrate this phone app to truly measure 6500 because all this is going to then say is that this is 60, uh, 6550 Kelvin. That would be 6700 Kelvin, uh, 6600 Kelvin, sorry. You know what I mean? It would just—it's just, it's just a, a, a scale of where this would be anyway. So this little inaccuracy of 300 Kelvin, um, I, I honestly do not care about. It, it does not matter to me. Um, what matters is that I am getting equal all the way up, all the way up and down is roughly equal. That is the most important thing. And I would say again, your greens should be one to two percent. Now this is an interesting one. Uh, this is Dolby Vision. Now Dolby Vision is um, there's a lot of things settings you can't control in Dolby Vision. Uh, I just want to show you uh, think about that. Now Dolby Vision captures uh, must be capturing things in a very different way um, because the first thing you can see is we've actually gone to four percent green, three percent green, three percent green at forty. The Kelvin's still again around the same, but we with Dolby Vision we have more access to green. Um, 69 at 50, 60, 2 percent. Does seem to get better as we get lighter. 
so it's just something to think about. 80%, we've actually gone to 1% green. 6950 Kelvin. 90, 1%, 100%. So, um, can you calibrate with this uh, for a TV? I think you can. And again, um, I want you to not consider so much this number itself. What is more important when you calibrate is getting every single one of these 20, 30, all are roughly the same. If you can do that, then the picture quality and the temperature, the white, the white balance and everything will look so much better and more balanced, even on a cell phone app. This is what, the, this, is what this is showing me, again, because my TV is is professionally calibrated so you can actually gain some knowledge from this of how good this thing is um, now all right so here's how I would um, I would calibrate a display and here's how I'm going to calibrate my display downstairs um, I have uh, a, just a, a it's an office TV uh, it's a Vizio um, it has access you don't have to get into the service menu or anything like that to actually calibrate calibrate the colors um, and just uh, just some uh, tips on the what some of the things mean. Um, again, um, in a, in calibration sen uh, sense, gain is the high uh, the high part of the uh, grayscale, we'll say, and a cut is the low end of the grayscale. So if you have like gains and cuts on your TV, you now know exactly what they mean. Uh, cut is the low and gain is the high, right? And um, you can start off with a two-point um, a, a two calibration if you want. You can keep these things really simple. Just do a two-point calibration. You don't have to go over every single one of these. Uh, now, if you do a two-point calibration, uh, the best one to start on is 30 uh, because uh, it is the best average of the low end. The low end uh, cuts are from 50 below and the gains are from 50 and above. So you want to get in the middle of this. So me um, measure at 30% IRE, um, a 30% grayscale uh, for the cuts and see if you and see what this measures. If if the phone if your phone and again you should be in your most accurate setting, right? Let's imagine for now it's filmmaker mode or a cinema mode, um, anything like that. Remember, you should be at, on, on an LG OLED, you should be on warm 50 or you should be on warm 2 on some of the other OLEDs like mine. They're the most accurate uh, color modes to be in. Um, and right away, you should be getting down to under 7,000, I would say. Um, so what I would do then is not worry about this number. If you get the, if you got this app and you started using it, and you started measuring the TV, and the the TV itself said 7,200 Kelvin, right? Do not worry about that for now. The, again, the goal now is to start calibrating uh, either in a two in a two step. You can do the two step and just get a broad idea now of let me do 30 IRE and let me do uh, 80. 80 or 70 and get those around equal whatever they may be if it's 7,000 then for now just do 7,000 anything after that if you'll see some weird oddities like you're getting say 5% green then it's going to require some other things to happen like hey we probably at this point do need to pull you can either pull down green or you can push up blue and red now again, um, uh, what uh, the other YouTuber uh, pointed out is that red is a little bit uh, funny on the OLEDs because you potentially could clip red. Um, so there's just some things to think about. So in this case, you could start pulling uh, green down. Again, just get into the 2% range. If you get into this 2% uh, green range, you're going to be fine on everything. Um, and then look, if you want to go deeper into that, you can do a, I think an 11, 11 step or a 22 step. Now he, um, the, the other guy on YouTube, he said 
the calibrations actually stack. So if you did the two step first, then you went in, into say a 10, step, a 10 step or an 11 step calibration, you did that and then you did the 22, the 22 you'd be getting bleeding edge accuracy if you'd done it all the way down uh, in that way. So, um, well, when I say bleeding, again, we're on a, we are on a phone. It, it, it's definitely something to consider. Um, but um, what this phone app is, again, what this phone app is showing that uh, within some level of accuracy, it is showing that the color temperature on my display is even the entire, within reason, you know, within, a, within 50 to 100 clicks, um, it is basically accurate the entire way up, up the way it's measuring. So um, that's how I that's how I would calibrate a brand new display. Um, and yeah, I think this is really interesting. Um, I am gonna calibrate my display downstairs just to see what I can do with this, because I, I was thinking, um, well. On my OLED, the phone is measuring 6,800 Kelvin, right? Should I measure my TV downstairs for 6,800 Kelvin? And I, I thought, yeah, I could get my TV downstairs looking my, like my OLED. The problem is with that is again, it's my TV downstairs is an LCD. It may measure color and brightness differently. It just, it just might not. It might not have this blue, slight blue push right because it's not an OLED um, it's just things to consider so um, this is why I'm saying put the, your TV in its most accurate mode with the most accurate settings out of the box that you can actually get see what this measures at 100 or 80 whatever and see if the entire grayscale measures in that same way if it's if things are out by 200 here and 200 there start um, adjusting them to get them all around the same value that is that is the first goal after that then you might be able to fine-tune your greens and your reds slightly right if you are leaning into the three percents um, again I would try and get this into the two percent range um, yeah and just um, yeah I think this is really uh, f for not having um, you know, equipment and things like that. Now, um, <laughs> when you log in, when you first uh, start the app up, uh, you will really be bombarded by, hey, can you buy this product outright? Um, you know, it's a, it's a free app. You can use it freely, but um, they, they would like, um, you know, they would like some support. I, I don't know if there's ads on there and stuff. It's, it, a lot of cell phone uh, apps do this. So that is just one thing to consider. Like when you log in, when you you know get in there for the first time, you'll probably see like a, an ad saying, "Hey, can you buy this outright?" You know. Um, now look for me. Uh, here's what I do: uh, if I use something for six months and I th I think it's brought incredible value to me, then I'll support it, right? Um, so. If I'm still using this uh, phone in, say, six months' time, or I know I'm like, hey, this is actually quite good. Um, whenever I get a brand new TV, I'm going to go up and down the grayscale and see how things measure, and I'm still using it in, say, a year's time, then I, I will probably support this project, right? I'm that type of person. If anything is free, are you still using it in six months, like a lot of the free apps and um, things that I do, then I'm going to support them. So this is brand new to me right now. So we'll see. Uh, yeah. So I think that's uh, I think I think that's everything uh, talked about here. So yeah, my 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 display is measuring uh, 6,800 Kelvin, um, and when I watch the picture, that doesn't that doesn't have a um, tint to green. You know, even in Dolby Vision, where it's actually leaning green um, down the lower end of the grayscale uh, by three. 3% uh, sometimes. Um, by eye, it doesn't appear to look that way. So um, this green thing that he was talking about in his video is definitely um, synonymous, really, with the CX and the C1. And then they fixed it in the C2. 
Um, so that's just uh, some things to consider as well. But again, with this phone app, you can go in there and start um, changing things. You know, you could, if if you're leaning like six percent green and you really don't want to be in that zone, you can bring this down to in the two one to two percent range and really get some. I think a decent level of accuracy um, for free, basically. Now look, if you're one of those people like me that um, I can't sleep at night knowing that my TV is not in its absolute perfect state, um, then find a professional calibrator and have them come in. You pay $400, that's what I did. Uh, paid $400 and they had come in and calibrate the display for you. Um, is it expensive for you? Uh, it may be expensive for you. It's not expensive for me uh, because I see incredible value in having my uh, TV professionally calibrated so, so it can look this way up and down the grayscale completely clean of uh, any hues, greens and things like that. Remember though, these TVs are not perfect. Like my LG C9, it's not perfect. That is how it calibrated. The phone may be reading green, and sure, there might be some little uh, green in there, right? It's not a perfect display. There is no perfect display. Um, this is just about having fun uh, and getting your display, understanding your display, and uh, seeing if you can get this to look uh, relatively accurate, you know? That's all, that, this is all we care about here, relative accuracy. Don't worry that it's not 6,500 uh, Y point exactly and things like that. Just, we're trying to understand the TV and we're trying to, um, we're trying to really have fun with this. At least, you know, that's, that's my uh, thoughts on this. So yeah, um, so yeah, really good. Yeah, just a shout out to this guy, uh, Plasma TV for Gaming. Is This guy's ultra hardcore into gaming. Um, he has not stopped calibrating his uh, TV uh, since he had it. He came from a Plasma TV and went into an OLED, and he didn't like the way his OLED looked. So um, I think he's got a background in engineering, I can tell, because um, he, he won't stop, um, you know, uh, trying to find the best settings for this TV. And uh, again, this reminds me of myself, really. Um, it's just, again, I've had uh, somebody calibrate my TV for me, and it's, <laughs> you could say, it's, it's took the love out of trying to find the best settings and do your research online on the forums and thing and seeing what works and stuff. But yeah, so I'll, I'll leave his uh, link in the description. And if, uh, have I not told you what the app, I don't even think I've told you what the app's called, so, so that's bad. Sorry about that. <laughs> really should have done that at the start. Uh, it's called Color Temp Meter, and I will leave the links uh, for that in the description. Uh, by the way, there was another app I also used as well, um, just to check um, nits as well. Uh, it's, a, it's actually relatively decent. It's called Lux Light Meter, and um, you can see how many nits you want to be displayed, say in SDR and things like that. So. I'll see if I can leave those links in the description and um, I'll leave a link uh, for this video and probably his uh, page as well because uh, uh, if, if you're like me really gonna love pretty much most of the videos this guy does because um, it's just really about discovery seeing what things work and getting the best out of your display without paying for it um, you know now even if he had a professional come in and calibrate his display because he's a gamer and he's coming from that background, I'm not sure. I don't know if he'd actually like it uh, because the colors aren't as saturated um, in a professional um, setting, really. Um, and I think he wants, um, you know, a lot of the times bleeding edge brightness and bleeding edge color while re retaining a level of balance up and down the grayscale. It's still about accuracy to some extent, you know. We're, and that is the best thing I think about this app. It can still provide excellent um, s uh, accuracy from the top end to the low end to around 20% to 80%. In that range, it can actually do a really good job. So, yeah, 
Um, so yeah, uh, color temp meter, check it out. Hopefully I'll uh, get the links all ready in the description and stuff like that. And check out this guy's channel. Really interesting. Really interesting. Now, if all, if anybody else uses this and they've actually had their TV calibrated, uh, calibrated, please let me know your results, especially if it's an OLED. I want to know if it's measuring 6800 Kelvin. If it is, then chances are that all OLEDs are measuring 6800 Kelvin. And I would use the Kelvin score as well from a calibration point of view. Um, as a warmness uh, control. So calibrate your display. You could calibrate your display to uh, 6500 Kelvin, right? And just start watching some content. Um, the news, films, um, different vari variations of content and things like that, just to get an idea of how that looks. If you said to me, I think it actually looks too warm, whites don't look white, they actually look more uh, orange and things like that, uh, then chances are uh, 6500 Kelvin is actually too, it's gone down too far, if you're on a low lead at least. Again, I don't know these other uh, display types, whether it's going to be doing that or not. I'm going to have to check on my other uh, TV downstairs to see that. Um, so yeah, it's just some, just some things to think about. So you could be like, Okay, well, let me try calibrate into 60, 66 or 6700 Kelvin, right? As long, again, as long as, as long as everything is balanced up and down the grayscale, the picture is going to look even all the way down. You shouldn't see hues. And again, as long as you've kept your greens within 1% to 2%, you won't see hues all the way up and down because you've fixed those already. Um, you might be a person that actually likes a cooler image, right? You know what? I'm going to calibrate my display to 7,000 um, Kelvin, right? You, that might be you. you. You might like that look. You might not like that a warm look that, when, hey, when you get into accurate modes, it looks too warm. I just don't like that. You know, some people might, might be like that. Calibrate the display to 7,000. Again, as long as you're, e you're even all the way up and down the grayscale, the picture will look balanced, kind of like this. It would look even. It would look the skin tones will look nice. Um, so I think this app actually does a fabulous job at that, at that those ranges, 20 to 100, keeping that range like that, and providing some level of of, of some level of accuracy. You're not going to be as accurate as a professional calibration. If you want that, then you go pay for it. If you don't, then you have to use something like this. And it's not bad uh, from, what, from what I'm seeing. And again, I've had my display professionally calibrated and uh, I recommend it. I definitely recommend it. So uh, give it a try um, and play around with this. If, you, if you're like me and you do like to get in there and, and calibrate, um, if you don't want to calibrate, you don't, like, you don't want to touch any of the numbers. Right, I don't want to touch anything. Fine, use the app still, and let's say you have the Spears and Munsell disc and things like that on 4K. Get some test patterns, 30 to 100, um, or any of them really. You could even start in the middle, 50%, right? Find a mode on your TV that is the most accurate to around, again, if you're on an OLED, between 65 and 6800 Kelvin, around there. And is it even all the way up and down? Um, is that the level of accuracy that you want? Try and find the best mode. You can just use it for that if you wanted to. That would be fine. So there's all sorts of different levels you can do here. Um, so yeah. Um, I think I'll end the video here. And I think I've said enough. Really cool stuff though. Uh, I like this. And um, yeah. Uh, if you've had any experience with the app or any of the other apps like measuring and things like that, uh, please let me know. And um, yeah, just have a, have a good day and I appreciate you watching.